Coming up next, a song that has become one of the most famous urban legends to come from the 1980s, told and retold hundreds of thousands of times. I mean, did the singer really witness a murder and then write about it to haunt the killer? Or is it a total farce? The story of a song that has become one of the biggest of all time, only to sell outside of the top 10 back in the early 80s. The true story is coming up next on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. I'm really anxious to share another story from our series, Number One in Our Hearts. This is where we break down a song that was so phenomenal that it deserved to be king, king of the charts, at the top of the charts. This one peaked at number 19 outside of even the top 10. But I got to tell you, decades later, most are shocked that it wasn't a number one hit because it's so big. As we come to know on this channel, in the life of a songwriter, a lot of times their most inspired material comes from a, a painful experience or a tragic event. The emotional suffering or hardship brought about by those occurrences can trigger some incredibly incisive lyrics that give a song a, a universal reverence and uh, just a deep appreciation. And then sometimes that same song somehow spawns urban legends that get told and retold so much that it becomes really the story or the narrative. I can feel it. In the case of Phil Collins' dark tour de force, In the Air Tonight, both of these things apply. It's a song that Phil Collins wrote during the bitter breakup and subsequent dissolution of his first marriage in the late 70s. When it was released as the lead single from Phil's debut solo album, Face Value, in 81, like I said, In the Air Tonight stalled at number 19 on the Billboard Hot 100. But with its eerie guitar licks, soul-stirring vocal and thunderous drum crash. It has generated a preeminence as one of the coolest compositions ever recorded, and today it's number one in our hearts. Phil Collins is such a gifted songwriter and artist, whether with Genesis or solo. He's created so many songs that should have been number one. For me, this song is at the top of that list. It's, it's so atmospheric and, and spine-tingling. Oh, Phil's Face Value album was full of songs that were an outlet for him to, to express the anger and betrayal that wounded him from his first divorce. He intended the songs in Face Value to be messages to his ex-wife in an effort to get her to reconsider their divorce and you know, come back to him. However, the songs or the messages had an adverse effect on his ex-wife. Uh, it drove her further away. She even said that she felt that the song villainized her. But ultimately, the marriage was not salvageable, and Phil would continue to convey his, his anguish and his misery in several songs that he wrote during that period, but were not released until after Face Value. Talking about songs like, I don't care anymore. Oh, I don't care anymore. Barn Burner, that one. Uh, that was released on Hello, I Must Be Going and How Can You Just Sit There, which was shaped into the number one hit, 84's uh, Against All Odds, Take a Look at Me Now, parenthesis song. We covered that one last year. Um, In the Air Tonight was originally presented to his Genesis bandmates, Mike Rutherford and Tony Banks, to be included on their epic 1980 album, Duke. That's what Phil Collins said. But I guess Tony and Mike rejected it, saying that the song was too simple. To be fair, there are several different stories about this. One is that Phil presented it to him and it was rejected. Another is that Tony said that he never heard it. Whatever the story, I'm sure in hindsight, Genesis would have loved to have included it on Duke. It's such a great song. In the Air Tonight begins with soft percussion from the drum machine and drum pads and that spooky guitar riff played by longtime Phil Collins friend, Daryl Sturmer. Who claims that the guitar part is not really a riff at all. Sturmer recalled that he was sitting in the control room at an L.A. recording studio with Phil Collins and he had the volume of his amplifier turned up as loud as it would go. 
uh, when he hit a chord with a guitar that made an ear-piercing noise that Phil described as the sound of an electric razor. And they decided to incorporate that effect in the song because it provided what Sturmer called a distant but powerful distant sound. That distant transmission certainly added to the ominous vibe of the song. In order to replicate that effect, there must be a distorted sound coming from the amp. Uh, Daryl Sturmer played bass and other guitars for Genesis during live concerts, uh, and he performed lead guitar and Phil's solo concerts, uh, in which uh, Phil's not really touring anymore, which is so sad. Uh, that gloomy, mysterious piano part in the intro is Phil playing on a Rhodes piano. And then over a quiet hi-hat and soft snare backing track on the drum machine, Phil begins his incredible ascending reverberating vocal. As soon as you hear the song begin, you can't help but stop whatever you're doing and just let its riveting power consume you, envelop you. It's one of those songs that after just a few listens, you find yourself telling people, you know, listen to this next part and, and wait for it, wait for it. Oh yeah, and listen to this part right here. I mean, I do that all the time with my kids and they're like, dad, we know, stop. The very first verse of In the Air Tonight, you know, well, if you told me you were drowning, I would not lend a hand. Created several urban myths that Phil has had to dispel many times. One myth is that Phil, as a young man, actually saw a man drowning and wasn't able to help him because he was too far away. Another one, which is the one that's told a lot, is that Phil saw a man watching another man drown. He was too far away to help, at least Phil was. That man had the ability to lend a hand and would not, and essentially murdered him by not rescuing him. And so Phil decided instead of calling the authorities, he would write a song about it. And then years later, when he'd achieved all this fame, he invited the man to his concert, put him in the front row, shined a spotlight right on him, and performed in the air tonight, pointing a finger at him while singing, I know what you did. In fact, Jimmy Fallon asked Phil about this on The Tonight Show a few years back, and of course, Phil Collins, ever their professional, set the record straight. Okay. That is the best story I've ever heard of. I know. Unfortunately, none of it's true. <laughs> that story, along with any other urban legend about the lyric, are just not true. Phil stated that the drowning that he refers to is merely symbolic for ejecting someone that has turned their, their back on him. Uh, the lyrics were actually derived from improvisation during a songwriting session in the studio. Uh, Phil recalled that he was just fooling around. He came up with the chords that he liked, so he turned the mic on and he just started singing. The lyrics you hear are actually what Phil wrote spontaneously, something that Phil says he's quite proud of, which of course he is. The last time we ever met. Phil's vocal performance on In the Air Tonight is culminated by an electrical outpouring of melodrama in the way he sings, I can feel it in the air tonight, oh Lord, oh Lord, in the chorus refrain. Oh Lord, oh Lord. I just love it. Phil begs with such desperation. It's as if he's pleading to the Almighty to save him from this miserable existence. His vocal is a pure anguish and one of the many reasons I believe that Phil Collins has one of the most emotional and heart-wrenching voices of the entire rock era. You can't train that kind of passion, that kind of melancholy. The way his voice reaches inside our souls and just rips our heart out. Kano wins. Much like Frank Sinatra, who set the bar for everyone who would follow it the way that he could sing a saloon song. You know, a song for only the lonely, if you will. Phil Collins, he's about met that bar. In the Air Tonight is one of the prime examples of that experience. Phil has always had an underrated soulfulness and breadth, but his vocal force is wildly unleashed at the end of In the Air Tonight and a sign of things to come with other Torch songs like don't let him steal your heart away, separate lives, if leaving me is easy, heart-wrenching, and of course, throwing it all away. I mean, his vocals 
on those songs are mesmerizing and heart achingly beautiful. And you make it stronger. Coming back is harder. Of course, we have to talk about that In the Air Tonight is perhaps most notorious for a groundbreaking drum sound called Gator Reverb. Phil used Gator Reverb extensively in his recording, both in his solo work and uh, working with other artists. Now, the first time it happened uh, was in Townhouse Studios in Shepherd's Bush, West London. This is where legendary producer Steve Lillywhite and then engineer Hugh Padgham famously applied uh, Gator Reverb to Colin's drum timbre on the Peter Gabriel track Intruder. It was a happy accident, as Pageant discovered the sound on the fly when he opened an overhead mic intended to be used as a channel for talkback. The mic was above Colin's drum set, and uh, this is when the pair were working on the track, and the microphone was heavily compressed as well as using a gate. So going forward, Hugh Pageant and his crew rewired the Solid State Logic 400 mixing board so that the board was already set up to record uh, the desired outcome that would later be termed gated reverb effect. And of course the effect was used in, uh, in In the Air Tonight and other Phil Collins classics like Against All Odds. The accident achieved such an exciting result that later models of the SSL 400 mixing board made it possible to produce Gator Reverb with a simple touch of a button, like I said. Now, Phil played the Roland CR78 drum machine on In the Air tonight. Uh, the first time he used that particular drum machine was on the symphonic art rock track, Duchess. Great song on the Genesis Duke album. The album version of the song does not feature live drumming until the famous bridge, but during the review of the last recording session for Face Value, legendary Atlantic Records CEO Ahmet Erdogan he advised Phil Collins to perform drums during the intro and the verses, so those were added to the single version for the radio. As we further break down the song, I do want to thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear, the glasses you see on my face right now. Make sure that you go to zenny.com. So always running specials where you can get a brand new pair of frames and design them to your liking for less than the price of a vinyl record. Zenny.com, the only place to get your glasses. Now the climactic highlight of the song is definitely the stunning drum crash in the bridge. It's what many musicians call the best drum feel of all time. As impactful as that part of the song is, it wasn't like Phil and, and Hugh Padgham planned to create a big game-changing drum fill. It was another example of extemporaneous magic you know, that used to happen when music was captured in a recording studio with real human beings. Unfortunately, those days are gone with people recording music on their computers in their basements most of the time. Phil played that explosive drum fill, perhaps feeling something special that he didn't immediately recognize because he and Hugh Padgham decided to use that particular take for the final version, you know, with no lofty expectations. Pretty cool. After they listened to the playback of what they chose as the final cut, they didn't say, wow, people are going to freak out when they hear that drum fill. It's very interesting that something that has become so impactful it was just completely unforeseen and unintentional. It just makes the recording of In the Air Tonight that much more intriguing. In the Air Tonight has become a prominent fixture in popular culture. I mean, it's been used so much in TV shows and commercials and, and movies. The tune was perfectly placed into a pivotal scene in the pilot episode of uh, the popular 80s TV crime drama Miami Vice and was subsequently included on the Miami Vice soundtrack in 85 that went to number one. The enchantment over this song really took off from, from there. Uh, there's so many uses, but I want to talk about two unforgettable placements of In the Air Tonight in a film. The erotic train ride scene with Tom DeCruz and Rebecca De Mornay. Uh, 83 Risky Business. And I've been waiting for this moment. 
And then, of course, there's the scene in the 2009 comedy The Hangover with Mike Tyson, Iron Mike, in a cameo role, playing the air drums during the song's booming drum crash and hilariously singing the chorus. Hitting nothing but sharp notes before, you know, cold cocking Zach Galifianakis. <laughs> With a big right cross. One of the highlights of Phil's shows is, of course, when he walks around singing the song so hauntingly, and then he sits at the drums right at that moment and does his thing. No doubt about it, we love Phil Collins. Over a fascinating career with Genesis and as a solo artist, the former childhood actor has created or co-created some of the most interesting and endearing music of the entire rock era. And you know, although it was inspired during a hellishly traumatic period of his life, Phil Collins gifted us in the air tonight. A riveting classic rising from the, the wreckage of frustration and anger that surpassed expectations. From the guy who looked more like your uncle, than a rock star, armed with one of the most passionate, expressive, and emotional rock voices, like I said, of the era. I still don't think he gets the credit he deserves as one of the greatest hit makers ever. I mean, from 84 to 1990, 1984 to 1990, with Genesis and Soul, he had like a zillion top 10 hits. Maybe not a zillion, but he had 20 top 10 hits and eight number ones, none of which were his most streamed song ever in the year tonight. It may have stalled at number 19, but it has surpassed so many that have hit this, the number one spot. But most importantly, it is number one in our hearts. By the way, the week that In the Air Tonight peaked at number 19, the top five songs on the Billboard charts were Endless Love by Diana Ross and Lionel Richie, theme from Greatest American Hero, Believe It or Not, by Joy Scarberry, I Don't Need You, Kenny Rogers, uh, Jesse's Girl by Rick Springfield, and Elvira by the Oak Ridge Boys. Down in the 10 to 20 spots near Phil were the songs Who's Crying Now by Journey, Time Alan Parsons, The Stroke, Billy Squire, Urgent by Foreigner. I mean, the 80s were so good, so varied. Who's crying now? Overall, to Phil Collins, I gotta say, we salute you. Creating a heart-wrenching song that's still ringing the bell from the fictional drowning urban legend that we've repeated as kids, to Mike Tyson's favorite drum fill ever. Thank you for the classics, Phil. Uncle Phil. Leave us a comment about Phil Collins and this classic song, In the Air Tonight. What do you think about the song, the gated reverb, the vocals, everything? What are your memories of it? Tell us about it. If you like this content, we do invite you to subscribe below so you can always be a part of this. And uh, till next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. Mm -hmm.